Hello, this is Dread, and in today's video topic, we're going to be talking about Diablo 4 and my current build in it uh, that I started with. Now, of course, I want to talk about something real quick. I got the game for free, the $100 edition, the Ultimate Edition. I got a code from a partnership program between Blizzard and this other company. I got a code for that for free because of my YouTube and stuff like that. But I am going to criticize the game as if I spent $100 on it because, you know, that's what I should be doing, right? Now, also as well, I want to mention that we're going to try to just stay away from all the drama and all the garbage that usually is associated with a Blizzard title. As, trust me, there's plenty of it. I'm going to try to just focus on the game because... I play games for fun. I like to have fun. I play games to get away from all of that, get away from the drama, the politics, all that stuff. So we're going to maintain that. And we're also going to maintain that in the comments as well, right? Now, let's talk about Blight, Corpse Explosion, Necromancer, or whatever you want to call what I'm setting up. So I leveled with a Sever Necromancer Guide from Maxwell. I'll be linking that in the description. That's what I leveled as because I didn't play in either of the betas and I never played Diablo 3 as well. I played a very small amount of Diablo 2. So I was out of my zone when it comes to this game, right? Like in the beginning it was rough because I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, so I was like, you know what? Let's just follow a guide until I feel comfortable to make my own decisions. And that's what I did was eventually once I got to... Uh, World Tier 3, I started messing around with my own setup, uh, and now we're playing Blight and Corpse Explosion. Uh, so the idea of the build is we're trying to stack as many damage over time sources as humanly possible for the Shadow Blight Ultimate Keystone. I'll show that on screen. Essentially, the idea is every 10 ticks of damage that you do with DOT, right, or any 10 shadow damage hits or dot ticks or whatever will apply a stack of shadow blight and then once you get 10 of those you will hit with shadow blight doing a amount of damage now one of the things that damage over time necromancer is really good at is making a bunch of damage over time pools. So like for instance, every single time I cast Corpse Explosion and it creates one of those pools, that is an individual tick from the other Corpse Explosions I do. And they stack infinitely. Same thing with Blight Pools, uh, same thing with the Dot Pool that I make from uh, Blood Mist thanks to a Legendary that I have. All of those stack together and the more of those ticks I get per second, the more Shadow Blights I do and the more damage I do. And the rest of the character is built as such. So like for instance, we have a thing on our weapon that increases the damage of Shadow Blight if we've procced it recently and this will stack up to five stacks. We very easily get up to five stacks with this setup because we're constantly triggering it, like constantly triggering Shadow Blight. So it's all the way up to the max amount of damage you can get out of this. Uh, we also trigger it through, uh, we have Bone Prison set up with uh, Blight Pool spawn. So that's another damage over time tick. So of course, either we spam Blight on an enemy or we use Bone uh, bone the bone wall the reason we like the bone wall so much is we get in really hairy situations sometimes with a lot of you know elites and since we're a damage over time build we kind of have to do something to keep the elites standing there so bone prison is really good for that it also applies vulnerable which is really strong because it's a lot of increased damage taken from the enemy also as well we have corpse tendrils which drags mobs into our area so that we can overlay all of our damage over time ticks to kill mobs faster. It increases our clear and makes it buttery smooth, especially when you do the wombo combo where you put the corpse expl uh, corpse tendrils down, then you put the bone prison down, then you put it uh, put a few blights down, then you use blood mist and run around them, and that will essentially kill most packs, including the elites. Right so far from what I've been playing. Now, also as well, uh, we have a uh, unique right now that makes it so that Blood Mist, it will uh, trigger a corpse explosion every second, and it'll also 
spawn a corpse every second. And that has allowed us to essentially get even more single target out because uh, if we are taking in some damage and we want to just be immune for a second, we turn on Corpse Mist and then just walk around a little bit and cause a bunch of corpse explosions. Now you must be wondering, Jed, why does your corpse explosion not instantly proc most of the time? That is because I have a... Uh, I don't know what you call it. I think legendary or unique or whatever, whatever it is in this game. It's like the super legendaries, whatever they're called. Uh, and essentially this one that I have, it's a pair of gloves. Uh, it allows us to turn our corpse explosion into kind of like a volatile zombie, if you're familiar with that exile. So essentially we'll summon a skeleton, which will run towards the enemy and then explode. And this is absolutely amazing uh it took my clear feeling from eh, okay to absolutely amazing being able to just spam corpse explosions and all the corpses and watching them hunt down enemies and kill them makes it feel a lot better when we're clearing dungeons and stuff like that because i'll be honest in this game the density is really off like it's like out of whack all the time so having like homing projectiles helps a lot with our damage and our single target as well because uh you know, with bosses moving around, it's nice to have the corpse explosions actually go target the boss instead of, you know, stay where they're at. Now, that's pretty much it for the concept of the build. We're going to go in game and talk about my gear and my skill choices and stuff like that. All right, here we are in game with the characters so far. This is, uh, of course, Blizz QA team, you know, you get that reference, hard, 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 right? Uh, so the idea, like I said, we're mainly focusing around using uh, Corpse Explosion as most of our clear. As you can tell, with Blighted Corpse Explosion, it makes it so that with a combo of both of these, the Miasma of Corpse Explosion stuff, right, allows us to clear and proc Shadow Blight a bunch and get a lot of benefits from Shadow Blight, right? Uh, now, for things that we use on the side, uh, one of the nice things is whenever we use Corpse Explosion, we gain six essence whenever we use a Corpse uh, Explosion or whenever we consume a Corpse in general, meaning that we get a bunch of essence back. This game was a lot more of the mana spender slash gainer kind of ideology. So we use Blight as a way to spend our mana as it chunks really hard. It does a lot of damage. The problem is, of course, it's uh, it's mainly for single target. Also, as well, you know, it costs a lot of mana. So we gotta have a way of getting all that mana back, and we mainly get it back by just spamming through with Grim Harvest and getting a bunch of essence back for our blight. And of course, as well, we spawn as much corpses as possible with as many sources as possible to, of course, get enough mana to spam blight on a single target. But for clear, we kind of usually don't use blight. We mostly use corpse explosion because. It's nice. So let's let's go over just the skills, skill by skill, right? So like I said, Corpse Explosion, Miasma, right? Next skill, you have Corpse Tendril set up. Uh, eventually, you can put points into Corpse Tendril when you get more points, so you can reduce that cooldown. It'll increase the consistency of, you know, just how it feels in-game. Of course, we have the Vulnerable for the Corpse Tendrils. We also have uh, Slowed. This, there's a reason for that later on, as you'll see. Then, of course, the next skill, Bone Prison. Bone Prison's actually been really good. Uh, it's been, like, it's kind of saved me in so many bad situations because it just allows you to trap everything into, like, a small AoE, and you can layer all of your damage over times on top of it, right? And that allows you to essentially Shadow Blight them all, and kill them all, without having to really interact with them much. And of course, we also have Vulnerable on the Bone Prison, so we have more uptime of Vulnerable on bosses. Now, uh, the next skill is Blood Mist. Uh, Blood Mist is special because you know, uh, we get uh, this node, which allows us to make corpses. Anything that allows us to make corpses is amazing for us because we want as many corpses to uh, make as many corpse explosions as possible because if you're on a singular target, right, and you make a bunch of corpse explosions on that target, they'll all stack and uh, proc Shadow Blight, which is amazing. So getting eight more corpses is great. 
the last skill we have reap uh we mainly just have reap as a way of creating a corpse out of nothing because sometimes with the combo uh we want to reap which then creates a corpse we then corpse tendril it which does not consume the corpse and then we corpse explosion it right and then we use bone prison and then after all of that the mob should be sitting there dying and they can't really do much and that's thanks to acolytes reap also as well we get a little bit of damage reduction as well when we hit anatomy which is cool cool so all of that combined is great that's all of my skill setup now let's talk about my passive oh wait no there's no passives in this game lol. uh let's talk about my gear shall we so the main piece that makes this build feel amazing so far is Howl from Below. This is a sacred unique. So essentially, this is the only, like, uh, you can't add an aspect to it uh, and you can't trade it. So you do have to drop it first. Uh, if you want to play this version of the build and not play Sever like I leveled with, I would heavily suggest having a pair of these gloves first because they help so much because not only does that corpse skill attack speed make it so that we can spawn even more corpse explosions faster it just allows us to clear the screen easier thanks to the volatile skeletons charging at a random enemy and exploding also so 40 percent i believe that's multiplicative damage but i'm not entirely sure and that's great right even more damage and of course, uh, on our chest here, we just have a chance of creating a blood orb. Since we're consuming all of these corpses, it allows us to just get a bunch of blood orbs which heal us to full, which is great. Uh, our pants, we just care about the plus levels to corpse explosion. Eventually, you can get plus levels to bone prison so that you can actually reduce the cooldown more. The boots. This is very important for the build overall. This is a drop only aspect. So the item has to be dropped first and then you have to uh, extract that aspect and put it somewhere. And I put it on my boots for now. And this allows us to trigger corpse explosions uh, on surrounding corpses. So as long as you're near a bunch of corpses, it'll just keep detonating a corpse. It'll also reduce the cooldown. Uh, this cooldown, actually goes up significantly more than you see here. It goes up to like 0.8 if it's on like an amulet or something like that. It's just, I wasn't able to get it on the amulet. I had to force it onto the boots. Uh, hopefully I get movement speed eventually because I would love movement speed, right? That'd be great. <laughs> For the weapon here, we're gonna, uh, I just have a, just a, just the biggest, fattest stick I could possibly find with as much increased damage as possible. All of that intelligence, if you didn't know, it's giving us a large amount of skill damage. This is multiplicative as well. This is more damage, 32% more damage. So that's great from the, you know, the weapon. Also as well, the imprint. The uh, This is a drop only imprint as well. Each time the Shadow Blight keys passive deals damage to enemies, increases the next Shadow Blight damage within 10 seconds by 68% stacking up to five times. So the reason why we like that is it just makes it so that we deal even more damage with Shadow Blight, Shadow Blight, Shadow Blight, Shadow Blight, as many Shadow Blights as humanly possible, right? It's great. And for Amulet here, we just get a 75% increase more damage modifier on our Amulet once we, uh, Proc Shadow Blight 10 times for six seconds, which is very easy with this build. The ring here, we have uh, a dot on Blood Mist. Uh, this is a dot that can stack with all of your other dots, which allows you to stack Shadow Blight faster. And of course, the last one here, we have uh, just Bone Prison spawns a pool of Blight so that when I place down a Bone Prison, they you get an extra Blight, which does 50% more damage. And of course, uh, that allows us to benefit from all of our effects on our skill tree here. Like for instance, uh, stuff like this one here. Darkness still deal bonus damage to enemies are slowed. It makes us so we get the slow because if you don't know blight here, make sure that enemies are slowed. So we get all of that combined and make sure that the enemies are slowed and stuff so we deal even more damage to them, which is great. Uh, this node's really good. 
Like, I really like it. Oh, this one specifically. This ring in general is a really good ring, right? That's a lot of increased damage on, like, one ring, right? Uh, that's pretty much it. There won't be a full guide on this build till like, I actually get into the higher tiers. I actually was going to about to do the capstone dungeon for world tier 4, but I decided on making the video first. All that being said, spin dread. I'll have to go play this character more.